Hello, I'm Eric from Advanced Test Equipment Rentals, and today we'll be going over the AE Tecron 7224 Industrial Amplifier. The 7224 is a single channel linear amplifier designed for use in applications that require accurate power amplification along with low noise and distortion. When you receive the 7224, it will include an operator's manual, a quick start guide, and a power cord. You'll also receive a CD copy of both manuals so that you can download them to your computer if you choose. Most importantly, the amplifier comes installed with a 2.8 ohm resistor installed across your comm and chassis ground connectors. It is very important that you ensure the unit is never operated without this resistor. First, because the amp won't operate properly, and second, because you could damage yourself or the load. Now let's talk about some general specifications of the 7224. It has a frequency bandwidth of DC to 300 kHz and is capable of continuously outputting 1100 watts RMS with a 4 ohm load attached. Higher power levels exceeding even 4000 watts are also attainable by interconnecting multiple amplifiers and utilizing the 7224's master-slave function. Now let's talk about the front panel settings on your 7224. We've got the power switch, which also serves as a breaker to protect internal circuitry. If the breaker trips, simply flip the switch from off to on in order to restart your amp. We also have the gain control knob, which allows you to increase or decrease your gain from 0 to 100%. There is a fixed gain setting that can be enabled on the main board internally for a fixed gain of 20% if you so choose. And I'll show you how to set that up when we get to the main board configurations a little later. Also on the front panel, the enable switch will place your amp into run mode, which means your input signal will be amplified. The stop button will not allow your signal to be amplified. The reset button is used when a fault condition occurs during operation. The amp will be placed into standby mode when a fault occurs. Pressing the reset button will return the amp to run mode or stop mode depending on the mode that the amp was in prior to the fault occurrence and of course depending on the severity of the fault that occurred. We also have some fault indicators. All of these fault indicators will place the amp into stop mode. The fault status LED indicates an output fault condition and is typically triggered by two possible occurrences, either high frequency oscillation causing high shoot through current or an output transistor has shorted. The overload status indicator indicates that the output could not follow your input signal due to voltage or current limit constraints. To fix this issue, turn down your input signal level until the indicator turns off and to clear, simply press the reset button, as we stated earlier. The overtemp LED will light whenever the temperature sensors internally inside the amp detect temperatures that could damage your unit and will automatically place the amp into standby mode. If this fault occurs, remove the input signal from the amp and ensure that your fans are running. Allow the, the fans to continue running until the fault light stops indicating. And simply press your reset button. The overvoltage status indicates that the AC mains voltage is more than 10% of nominal and forces the amp into standby. The amp will automatically return to run mode when this condition has been fixed. Okay, next we have our back panel connections. We have your standard 20 amp, 60 hertz, 3 pin AC input connector. Here we have the amplifier output terminals, which are where we will connect our load. The load will be connected across the output and comm terminals and our chassis ground can be connected to any external ground point. Our input signal is applied through the SIM BNC optic panel. We have both an unbalanced BNC input and a balanced input terminal block to choose from. The interlock connector can be used to provide remote control and monitoring of the amp, allowing you to remotely enable or place the unit in standby, as well as monitor both the voltage and current output. It also allows you to monitor one or more amplifier conditions, including run status, over temp, over load, and over voltage. Now I'll show you how to configure the 7224 as a single amplifier or as the master in a master slave configuration. First, locate jumpers P1 and P2 towards the back right of the card and set them both to the master position. Conversely, set both pins to slave for use as a slave amplifier. You also have the option of configuring the amp to operate as either a voltage amplifier, which is a voltage controlled voltage source, or as a transconductance amplifier, which is a voltage controlled current source. 
This selection is made by jumper J4, which is located to the right of the master slave pins. The unit is set by default to controlled voltage. Please ensure that if you operate the amp in, contr in current controlled mode, that a load is always connected before you turn the amp on. When an amplifier is asked to operate in this way, any current source will increase its output voltage in an attempt to drive the requested current into the load. In an open circuit, creating current flow is impossible, and the current source will increase its voltage until it reaches the voltage limit of the unit, which is dangerous for both the amp and the technician using it. The next setting we'll talk about is the fixed gain variable gain setting. As noted earlier, we have the gain control knob on the front panel that allows us to manually vary the gain control. This unit comes set by default to variable gain adjust, but if you prefer, the amplifier gain can be set to a fixed gain of 20. In order to do this, we can unplug the connector from jumper J10, located in the center of the board, and place the jumper across the two left pins, as so. And now your gain will be set to a fixed gain of 20. The next option we have is whether you prefer the unit to power up in run mode or stop mode. The 7224 will power up in run mode when J11 is in the left enable position, which is the default setting, but can also be configured to power up in stop mode by moving the jumper to the right position. That's all the configuration options that are accessible on the main board. There are, however, more configurations available on the power supply board, which is located just to the right of the main board. The first power supply option we will look at is amplifier voltage potential. The 7224 can be configured for high current, 90 volts, or high voltage, 180 volts operation by switching between plugs J3 and J4. The 7224 comes by default in high voltage option. The 7224 also offers three bi-level switch settings, automatic, high, and low, which the user can select from. To access these settings, you need to remove the two screws holding the SIM BNC optic panel on the right rear of the unit. Without removing the ribbon cable, we can remove the SIM card from the amp and access the bi-level switch. Again, reference the operator's manual in order to determine which switch setting is best for you. The amp is set by default to automatic. Lastly, you can choose between the balanced and unbalanced input on the power supply card. Locate J4 and leave the jumper shorted across the terminal for unbalanced input or remove the jumper in order to access balanced input mode. I'll review again what the default settings are. The default configuration is controlled voltage, master mode, DC enabled, variable gain adjust, run on power up, unbalanced input selected, and power supply and auto range. All right, now let's run through the actual operation of the 7224 amplifier. I'll be operating the amp and all the default, default settings that I recently confirmed. The first thing I'll do is connect my 8 ohm load in series across the output and COM terminals as we have here. I also want to ensure that my chassis ground is connected to an external ground source, which mine is. The next thing we're going to want to do is make sure that our input source is turned down, which mine is. We're also going to want to make sure that on the front panel our gain is turned down before we turn the unit on, which mine is as well. And we're going to go ahead and turn the unit on. So now we can go ahead and turn our gain up. Okay, and now we can slowly increase our input signal level in order to increase our output gain, which we can see on our O-scope. We should be able to reach about 96 volts RMS with this single channel amplifier before we start to get a clipped signal. And we get about there, 94, before our signal starts to get clipped off. And that's how you run up the 7224 industrial amplifier. For more information on the AE Techron 7224 Industrial Amplifier, please give us a call or visit our website at atecore.com.